Hi, welcome back to the channel on the college process. Once again, my name is Ed from Principia Prep, and today we're gonna to be going over the forbearance extension and what to do now. But if you are new to the channel and are looking for additional college content, please hit the subscription button down below. It will notify you of new videos when they do come out. As well as if you have any comments or questions, please leave them down below. We do answer all the questions you leave down below in the comment section. As well as if you do enjoy today's video, please leave us a like, it does help the channel. That being said, let's jump right into today's video, the forbearance extension and what to do now. now to begin, let's go over where we've been already. Back in March of 2020, the federal government enacted the CARES Act, which basically within the CARES Act indicated that student loans, specifically the federal student loans, the federal direct student loans, as well as the parent plus federal loans, were all put into forbearance, which basically meant the interest rates were all dropped to zero, as well as no payments were necessary to be made. So basically the federal government just shut down all federal loans altogether. No payments were due, interest rates were dropped down to zero. And now as of yesterday, basically a little less than 24 hours ago, the US Department of Education came out again and indicated they're, they're not gonna stop the forbearance at the end of September. They're actually extending it four more months until January 31st, 2022. Now, instead of having just two months of forbearance, now you actually have six months of forbearance now. So that being said, now that the US Department of Education came out and indicated they're gonna give you four more months on top of the two months you have still until the end of September, let's talk about what you should be doing right now with the extra forbearance in place. Now, first, there was talk that the Biden administration was actually going to extend the forbearance six more months. So basically, February and March of 2020 were also gonna be included, but that didn't happen. They basically essentially met in the middle and gave you four additional months. In addition, the US Department of Education came out, the director came out and said, they're not extending it again. Do not look for them to extend it again. So we have to look at it from the point of view of this six months we have now left to go. This is basically all we're gonna have until we hear something about the loan forgiveness, whether it's the 10,000, 50,000, something in the middle, some kind of changes to the policies, or you don't know anything about the loan forgiveness. They've been talking about the 10,000 or the 50,000 please watch this video here. We go in depth into what we think is gonna happen with the loan forgiveness going forward. More likely it's not gonna happen, unfortunately, good, bad, or indifferent until probably this is over with the forbearance or at least basically pretty close to the tail end of this. So it's gonna be a lot closer to January, I believe, or if not after January, that we're gonna get any resolution as far as concerned with the loan forgiveness part. Let me talk to you guys about what I would be doing and how I would be handling this additional four months of forbearance. Now I'm gonna do this by basically breaking all the families watching this into three different groups. The first two groups are essentially the students out there. So you're gonna be talking about your federal direct student loans. The third group is gonna be specifically the parents I'll be talking to here, which is basically your parent plus loan. Now essentially this is the way it's gonna break down for the three groups. Group number one are gonna be the federal direct student loan borrowers that are not looking to go into income repayment programs. Also the ones that are not looking to do public service loan forgiveness programs either. Now group number two is gonna be the group that is looking to go into the income repayment programs or the public service loan repayment programs. And then group number three are the parents that have the parent plus loans. I'm gonna tell you guys exactly what I would be looking to do as well. That being said, let's jump right into group number one, the students that are not looking to do the income contingency repayment programs or the public service loan forgiveness programs. Now, if you don't know what these are for group number one, if you don't know what the income repayment programs are, or if you don't know what the public service forgiveness loan programs are, please watch this video here. Once again, I mentioned before, watch this video here. It will explain to you guys a little bit more in depth about what these programs are so you guys are better informed. But just to give you a quick little rundown, if you expect to be making at least $50,000 in the beginning of your career after college ends, or you expect within at least a 10 year time frame that your income will be way higher than, than $50,000, then I would definitely not be doing the income repayment programs. It would not make any sense for you. But once again, for more insight, please watch this video here. So group number one, what would I be doing if I were you guys? Well, it's very simple. Since you guys have essentially six months right now with zero interest rate, and you're not going into an income repayment program or public service repayment program, what I would be looking to do automatically now is being a very aggressive and paying down my student loan, the federal student loan, as much as possible. Because of the fact that we already know that they're not gonna extend it again more than likely, because this has already been extended twice already. That's number one factor. Second factor is, this is the only time, I mean the only time, you will ever have a federal direct loan or almost any loan really 
where any payments you elect to send in, even though you're not obligated to send any payments in, anything you send in will automatically reduce your principal. So if you send in a hundred bucks, that loan that you have drops by a hundred bucks. That will never happen again. So your goal right now is to eliminate the debt as much as possible. Be very aggressive in your repayments. Now, in addition to that, what I would be looking to do is, as I'm getting closer to the January 31st timeframe, where the forbearance ends, at that point in time, I would be looking to refinance. I would definitely be looking at groups like SoFi or Citizens Bank, but I would not be doing that at all until I got very close to, if not the end of the forbearance. Because for you guys, you have to pay off this debt essentially, good, bad, or indifferent, until we hear from the Biden administration that letting us know what they're gonna do as far as the 10,000 for forgiveness or the 50,000 or whatever it is they're gonna do. Until that comes out, you should be aggressively paying down your, your debt. Now let's look at group number two. Those that are going into, or are looking for going into the income contingency repayment programs and or the public service loan forgiveness programs. For you guys, I would not be making any payments on my federal loans right now. What I would be doing instead is I would be saving all the money I have coming in. So any stimulus money you had coming in, any refund checks, any discretionary income you have that you don't need to spend on rent or paying for a home or food or whatever may be your car bill, any additional money you should be saving away in a savings account, setting up a retirement account, so on and so forth. Because of this reason, until we get some kind of clarity about what the Biden administration is going to do with the loan forgiveness, whether it's a 10000 the 50000 because of the fact it's better to have the money in hand and then later on find out, okay, nothing is coming through. Let's send a bunch of that money to then pay off the student loans than it would be if you guys just wasted the money you guys have now. It would not make any sense. Also, another thing to consider here, before we get some kind of clarity on the on the income contingency repayment programs since 1995 when the income contingency repayment programs started since then so we're, so we're basically talking about almost 30 years only 32 people out of over 40 million people have actually gotten the federal loan forgiveness program all the way through and were forgiven their debt so for me group number two once again wouldn't be making payments but i would be saving all the money i can basically nest egg savings account just in case to see what we're going to do after the Biden administration comes out and says what they're going to do with their plan. But for you guys, since you're more likely going to be making a, a lot lower income than group number one, because that's the only reason you would go into the income repayment programs or the forgiveness programs to begin with, since you guys are going to be making, let's say, 50000 or below, I would be saving every dime I have coming in that I don't need to spend. And then lastly, let's go over group number three. These are the parents that have the Parent PLUS loans. Now for you guys, you guys, for me, essentially break into two categories. Category number one are parents 65 years of age and lower, and category number two is parents 65 years of age and older. Now the reason I break you guys into these two categories is very simple. For me and everyone else out there that understands how the Parent PLUS loans work, what you need to understand is the life expectancy now of someone in the United States has now reached the age of 77.3 years of age, which means if you're at the 65 year age or so, you're getting very close to work, good, bad, or indifferent, you're not gonna be here very much longer. And why is that important? Very simple. Since a Parent PLUS loan is only in one parent's name and it has nothing to do with the student whatsoever, the benefit here is if you pass away, that debt goes with you. So for group number two, the older parents, the longer you can push this off, this extension, by the way, is phenomenal for you guys. So if you guys, if you know good, bad, or indifferent, you might not be here by the time the end of that payment cycle has to happen for the Parent PLUS loan, then it's a good idea for you guys to keep pushing off the loan. And let me explain to you guys how this works for group number two, 65 year old and above parents, especially the one who has the debt. This has to be the parent who signed up for the Parent PLUS loan. Now for this parent here, in addition to the four months they just gave us now, so you have until January 22 of not making any payments, not doing anything, it's just sitting there basically. After that, you guys can utilize, if you have any hardships, you can use hardship as far as not having work or not being able to work or pay back the loan. You can use your own forbearance, which allows you to add another three plus years to this. And in addition to that, you can add deferment, which has another plus three years, which means in general here speaking, you can technically add before you have to make principal and interest payments on the Parent PLUS loan, you can actually add basically eight to 10 additional years of just paying interest or just paying 50 bucks a month. So if you're at 65 years of age, 
if we add, let's say, another 10 years before principal and interest has to be paid off, you're now at 75 years of age. This is why, for me, sometimes it makes sense to kind of take the gamble, take the risk in pushing off the debt. Because obviously, if you pass away, the debt passes away with you. Now, group number one, the issue you're going to have here is this. If you're thinking, let's try the same scenario. This is the problem with parents that are under the age of 65, good, bad, or indifferent. Problem's going to be, like, let's say you're 50 years of age. So if you have 50 years of age, if you were to add all the forbearance, deferments, the hardships that you can also add, let's add another 10 years to the end of that loan. So you go from 50 years old to 60 years old. More than likely, you're still going to be alive. And the problem you're going to have now is, unfortunately, the loan will double in size. Because if you're not paying, if you're doing forbearance, deferments, if you're not making any payments on it and just pushing it on, letting the interest grow, unfortunately, over that 10-year time frame, that loan will more than double. So group one and group two, you have to think about that as well. If you know your ancestors, you know they've all lived to be 90, 95 years of age, this might not make sense for you guys either. It's just something to consider. But for group number one, the people that are a lot younger than 65, then I would probably not do this. What I would be looking to do is aggressively pay down the loan now while you have a zero interest rate. So any money you send to them is essentially going right to principal. As well as once January comes around or as you're getting closer and closer to January, I would be looking to refinance because most of the Parent PLUS loans out there, unfortunately, range between 6 to 8% in interest. So those interest rates are very high. Very likely a refi through SoFi or Citizens. That's the direction I'd be looking to go in because these guys will typically give you a rate half of what your Parent PLUS loan. But once again, I would not refinance Parent PLUS loans until the forbearance is over. And with all that being said, if you do like the content here today, please leave us a like. It does help the channel. Also, if you have any questions, any concerns, ask us below in the comment section. We answer all your questions. By the way, just put them in the comment section. I'll answer all of them. And other than that, thank you once again for watching today's video. Once again, my name is Ed from Presidio Prep.